Welcome to the latest podcast from the Plastic Surgery Journal Club. Each month we review and appraise a journal article, typically from PRS, and summarize it for you in this short podcast. The full journal can be obtained from the PRS website. Hi everyone and welcome to the August 2016 Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Journal Club coming to you from Sydney, Australia. My name is Damien Marucci. I'm here with Constant Van Schuckweit, who's one of the unaccredited registrars. Uh, The first paper we looked at was the evidence for extending the duration of chemo prophylaxis following free flap harvest from the lower extremity, prospective screening for deep venous thrombosis. This is by Drs. Rao et al. from Aurora, Colorado, and was published in the August 2016 PRS. Uh, So, Con, what was this paper about in a nutshell? Basically, this question, uh, this paper is trying to answer the question of uh, whether patients undergoing these large free flap surgeries were at an increased risk for uh, VTE events subsequently, um, which would be similar to data that's been extrapolated from people undergoing major orthopedic surgery. Um, In this paper, they had a retrospective arm and a prospective arm. Retrospective arm consisted of 65 consecutive patients who were undergoing free flap harvest from the lower extremity. And uh, in that arm, they were looking at uh, the number of symptomatic DVTs or PEs that were detected. Uh, And in the prospective arm, they were looking at 37 uh, consecutive patients undergoing similar surgery, and they were doing routine screening. So at one week post-op and at four week post-op, all patients underwent routine duplex ultrasonography of bilateral lower limbs in order to see if there were any incidences of asymptomatic or symptomatic um, DVTs. So the key thing here is that they're looking specifically at patients who've had free flaps harvested from the lower limbs. So the kind of flaps they're talking about are fibula, uh, gracilis, ALT, and anteromedial uh, thigh flap. Okay, so what was the incidence of DVT in the two groups, both in the retrospective group and then in the prospectively group where they were specifically examined for DVT using duplex ultrasound? So in the retrospective group, the incidence of a symptomatic VTE was 4%. So there were three out of the 65 patients. Two of them developed DVTs and one of them uh, had a PE when they came in. In the prospective group, the incidence at one week post-op was 16%, so that's six out of 37 patients. Three of those uh, were thought to be chronic DVTs and three were acute DVTs uh, on analysis under the uh, ultrasound. In the prospective incidence, uh, a prospective group at four week post-op, uh, 20% uh, had DVTs, um, five out of 24 patients. So there were four newer acute ones and uh, there was one that was thought to be a resolving chronic DVT from the previous week. Um, significantly, uh, 13 patients were lost to follow up at the four week mark. They also did a cost analysis per patient in both groups. In the retrospective cohort, the cost per patient was $222 for uh, screening and treatment. And in the prospective group, uh, the cost was almost tenfold more, so $2,259. Uh, and they also analysed what the cost per uh, incidence of a DVT or a VTE event is per patient at their unit, and that was $33,000. Uh, significantly, in the, in the prospective group, if they didn't actually undergo screening but just uh, had routine prophylaxis uh, for four weeks, the cost would be an extra $130 per patient. So uh, I think in this group, the, they've demonstrated that it's safe to give these pa- patients a long-term prophylaxis post-op and that it could be cost effective, uh, but that there's no role in routine screening of these patients uh, to detect silent DVTs. So what did people think of this study? I think overall people thought this was a, a good and useful study. It's applicable to our daily um, practice. The good things are that they compare these two groups, at least, um, it is relevant. Um, and that uh, it shows that it is safe to use these in, uh, in patients undergoing significant free flap surgery. There were no significant bleeds uh, attributed to these uh, prophylaxis. Uh, the problems were that they might have actually re- underestimated the incidence of VTEs in the retrospective cohort. Patients might not have presented with uh, symptomatic DVTs. And the diagnosis in the uh, prospective group was very dependent upon the uh, duplex ultrasound technique and the operators who were using them, and also that 13 patients were lost to follow up uh, at week four. Um, So we're still trying to see if this is a statistically significant difference between the two groups. 
Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's it's hard to know the clinical significance of these silent DVTs that they were detecting, given that they thought that some of them were chronic DVTs. Um, in the retrospective group, uh, the only significant ones are going to be the patients, patients who are presented to hospital, either for leg swelling in a DVT or an actual symptomatic uh, pulmonary embolus. Uh, but this is certainly a major cause of mortality uh, in our patient population. Um, and it's a, uh, a preventable cause, um, or partially preventable cause. Obviously, uh, many patients get everything, calf compressors, TED stockings, uh, heparin, early mobilisation, still develop uh, a DVT and go on to develop a pulmonary ambulance. But anything we can do to decrease the incidence of that can only be a good thing. I agree. Thank you. Thank you for listening. For more of our podcasts, head to soundcloud.com or subscribe to us on iTunes and search Plastic Surgery Journals. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks also to the PRS Journal team for their ongoing support.